Peace, family. This is your boy, Gerald. It is the 22nd of January, 2022. How is everybody doing? So, first and foremost, because you may hear some noise, media in the background, um, this, sec this video is protected by Section 107 of the Fair Use Act. All, pro all proprietary use is for critique and educational purposes. Also, proprietors that have entitlement, non-modernization will be used. This is also being uh, played through YouTube Music, which is owned by Google. Once again, this is by Fair Use, the Fair Use Act, Section 107. And this is for educational and for top, as what well, my tongue is not working for for educational criticism purposes only. So let me get that out there. So how's your week? How was it? Was it good? I hope so. Um, I hope that wherever you are in the town near you, city near you, worldwide, you are well. Um, but I hope that you're resting. I hope that all that was seen this week, all that was revealed to you, you've allowed yourself to not only take note, but be aware of what the actual underlining reason behind it. Now, to do that, you must first allow yourself to be transparent. And to be transparent means you must find a place of vulnerability within yourself so that you can allow the awareness to take place. Why? Because you were born with a purpose. You were made, goodness, you were made perfect. You do understand that, right? Uh, how could you not? I mean, think about it from this standpoint. First of all, when the moment you took your first breath and was birthed to this earthly realm, you made a commitment that you were supposed to fulfill. And that is actually your purpose. And everything that has been revealed, it is going to lead you on that journey called your life. And depending on the lessons that are being shown, will either do one, one or two things. Either it will break off the rough edges, in turn empowering you, but also facilitating your foundation. Now here's also a beautiful thing about that. It will also show you how beautiful your worth, your your existence is. Because mind you, we are what we attract. You do understand that. Your entire reality as you know it can never be unless first you acknowledge it to have access in your life. That's for someone. But the reason I'm putting this out, and I'm going to try not to be winded, because today I had some errands I had to do this morning, and yeah, I cut my hair, and while I was driving, and like many of you, you, you may it may be the things that are uh, intangible, or the things that you don't put much focus, because it's instinct, um, you use that as a platform to tap into your inner self. It could be uh, if you're cutting the grass compared to sitting down and allowing your hand to doodle on a sketch pad, something is minute. But whatever it is, it is an underlining passion, which is really an illustration of you. So, you know, these last couple of months we've seen a big insurgence to push the narrative of division and you're like well Joe, that's been going on since the beginning of time but what i'm talking about is not only has there been a blatant attack or an agenda to separate the genders but it's also been a covert attempt to change the way you think now you got you got to understand something we are only given six percent access 
to this beautiful month. Now, with that being said, the moment that you took your first breath, you also brought into this physical realm spiritual gifts and talents. That's why I will always bang the gong or wave the flag when it comes to you, my queen, in regards to you already were given an advantage, which were two compared to one. One was you were given the gift of nurturement because you are female. You are the nesting of humanity. And some who are fortunate to understand the importance of that role and title will inherit the role called mother. Because, yes, because if you were birthed as a female, does not indirectly entitle you to be called mother. We know that. I mean, look at what transpired two weeks ago. We had a young, we had a young lady. We don't know her backstory, but she was pregnant. And for whatever her decisions were being contemplated, she chose to take the most precious gift and discard of it like it was nothing. And 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 it was very unfortunate because, you know, we live in an environment that even if the decision is made in what I call the 13th hour. You have, full, for in lack of a word, facilitation, facilitations of options. You have hospitals, you have fire departments, you have uh, police departments, you have options that if you should wake up one morning and say, you know what? The best thing I can do at this time is to rel to relinquish the responsibility because you might not be prepared. It could be because you're afraid because this, hey, you know, there is no uh, manual on how to be a father nor a mother. And that can be very intimidating, especially if you don't have the proper support system or the illustrations in your own development who am i talking to so you know that's why you have those that are capitalizing on said options like plan b and all this contraception but the one thing that is never talked about is the decision because a lot of times the greatest deflection tool used is well you know a man can use a condom, but we all know that a condom is only 99% effective. 100% effectiveness is abstinence, but that's not the world we live in. Where am I going, Gerald? So as I'm driving, coming from the barber, making my way back home because I'm actually waiting for uh, the UFC 270. I'm a big MMA uh, fan as well as boxing. I'm, I, I love combat sports. So we've got a big event going on and I can't wait to see the outcome of this is going to be. But as I was driving home and I'm taking, I'm taking focus of where I'm at, the surroundings of the other drivers, um, and I'm, my agenda is to get home safely, right? And then, in the midst of that, I got, I'm, I'm bumping some Tribe Called Quest. And uh, as I'm, I'm, I'm listening to Benita Applebaum, right? Cognitively, as I'm multitasking, I had an epiphany that I understood why the social narrative or pressures are the way they are when it comes to our queens. Now, first and foremost, get out your fields. 
this is my opinion and everybody's entitled to theirs. Because I, I had somebody reach out and say, well, why do you call women queens when that's false? They're not royalty. Well, yes, you are. Because no one can walk in your shoes, but we all can show uh, understand the sentiment known as commonality because there's only one you and there's only one story. Oh, that thought. Okay, so you may be wondering, if this is the first time that you found my video, first of all, I'm Gerald Davis. I am a big cheerleader when it comes to relationships, but I'm also a bigger uh, supporter of your personal happiness. Um, I used to say catchphrase life coach, but I've come to learn that there are those that will use that term, but in actuality, the only thing they're focusing on is to better their life, not yours. So, am I big on spirituality? Yes, I am. I place the most high first, and I can only speak from what's given to me by the most high, transmuted by these soup coolers understood by my heart. Why? Because I want you to win. So, what am I alluding to? For the last five years, I've noticed the social narrative really embrace the, uh, how can I say this? It, it, it really parodied uh, what we know as the Jezebel spirit. If you don't know the story of the Jezebel spirit, I highly recommend that you go upstairs. Go up in your search engine, put in the Jezebel spirit, and listen to what they say. And tell me that you do not see a parallel. Because everything that she did, um, it's, it's reality today. And of course... Um, Majority of her mo motivation was based off of physical sense, her physicality, and not her discernment. And actually, she more or less embraced uh, pretty much the devil's influence. Now, I know some of you may have a, a mindset of whatever your religious preference is that you're entitled to it or whatever that dogma may be. Uh, I, I'm a spiritualist. Difference between uh, spirituality and, and religion. Religion more or less means pattern, to do something repetitive. Spirituality is connection. So what are you connecting to? And if whatever that said connection is, does it yield the best you? Only you know that. Does it find peace? And does that piece, is it connected to your beautiful smile? Because just like a snowflake, there's not two that are the same. And see, I say that because I noticed the last five years, there has been an underlining motivation for the young to rush into the world. And in turn, it's like you're missing out. If you're not part of the party, you're missing, you're missing out. And then, in, and then in reverse, those that are seasoned, those that who are deemed adults, they have been motivated to embrace the behaviors of our babies. So there is a trajectory that is continuous but there's no peace in that. So, what am I alluding to? So as I'm rolling back in the Jeep and got Tribe Quad Quest on, excuse me, I got my, dropped my glasses, my reading glasses that is. And um, I'm thinking about things that I, I, I'm trying to check out Mind you, just to cap, just to pivot real quick, I'm almost done with my with my spare bedroom. I've ever, I've got it pretty much 91% set the way I want, and uh, 
you'll see it. You'll see it real soon because I needed that to expand off of this channel because it's time for this channel to grow. And with that being said, thank you for those reaching out. Uh, I've taken those uh, and those considerations definitely to heart and I plan to enact those same things because I know some of you like, well, I want to see more than the talking head and I want to give it to you. I really do. And with that being said, um, I have an account on Patreon and I'm going to tell you right now, source my name, Gerald Davis, G-E-R-L-D-D-A-V-I-S and subscribe. Right now, there's no there's no membership requirement. But I'm going to tell you, I've got content just sitting in the in the hopper per se. And when I start using that as a primary portal, I'm going to add a membership fee to it. So get in now while you can. Go ahead. Just go ahead and subscribe to it now because you guys will be more or less grandfathered in. You won't you won't have to uh, pay the uh, the membership fee that will come with it down the road. Now, so to get back to what I was saying, as I'm riding, I'm making my way here, I had an epiphany. I, it was like I heard this in my in my spirit. It was like the reason why people do what they do is because there is an ultimate goal. To benefit a select few, and I'm like, why am I, why am I thinking about that? Why that? So I'm rolling. I'm listening to the Far Side, and uh, you know, it, it just got clear. I was like, wait a minute. Look, we live in a world of content, so. To have content, I must have a narrative. Regardless if that narrative has ethics attached to it. But if I'm able to have content or a product that can be influential, that's going to only gain, that's only going to be a gain for a select few that can market it or benefit from it. Where am I, where am I going with this? Okay. Queen. I've echoed this, I can't tell you how many times. Some of you don't realize that the turmoil that you may be feeling, the disappointment, the anguish, the stress, those are nothing but what we know as, uh, how can I say this? I used to always call those, they're strongholds, they're known as strongholds, but I also knew that is, uh, what, was, what did I used to always call that? Other than the strongholds, these were nothing but emotional tests. And then I thought about it. I said, well, if you're being spiritually tested, why is the whole purpose? Because some of you have been given a spiritual gift that until you realize that it's within you, your empowerment, your discernment, your uniqueness, what makes you one of a kind, you're going to be at risk. So what is the best way to uh, distract or delay a threat? You give bad information out there. You use tactics that will possibly corrode or persuade the direction of the investor or, or whoever's taking in consuming that information. So think about it on this level. What if I told you the more that you invest in yourself, that connection is not only going to have an impact on your offspring, but it is so unique that it could be monumental to the point that it may change the world. 
So what's going on right now? We've got countless people that are focused on things that should not matter and don't have information to make logical decisions. We're going off of hearsay. We've become a, a hearsay uh, society. But what's sad about that is no one has yet to question or even ask what is truth. Because when you have been afforded what truth is, you've also been given the opportunity to make a decision. I mean, I heard something so far-fetched uh, a couple years back, and it, I was like, it blew my mind, but it made sense. It said, you know, when it comes to relationships, a woman would rather for a man to be forthright, to give her options on which way to go, than not at all. And that that's just the human dynamic across the board. Who doesn't want someone to be forthright? Because you make decisions off of information that is given. So, let me go a little deeper. Could it be, possibly, that the information that is being promoted through commercial means, the ultimate the ultimate goal the whole time is to distract you from the focus that was required for you to be your best self. Who am I talking to? So, I'm going to say something that's going to offend somebody. But just know it comes from a, love, a loving pace. Maybe that's the whole reason the social narrative the way it is today. What you see as being the, how can I say, uh, the choices made. The, yeah, the, the narrative of what's acceptable compared to what isn't is based off of lack of knowledge. Now, when you think about it, if you remember those that are are pretty very well versed in, uh, in doctrine, what was the one thing that the Most High said? said, and I'm going to paraphrase it, it said, most will perish due to what? Lack of knowledge. So, if if you have lack of knowledge on something that is deemed important, you're only going to go off of what's been given. But if you don't have discernment to understand the difference of what's being offered, you could be, unfortunately, misled. So maybe, just maybe, that is why we are we had to go through our hot girl summer. Maybe that is the reason why you have a million plus images of low self-esteem because the narrative is I got to use what I got to get what I need instead of investing in who I am so I can claim what I'm about. And let me peel that banana a little closer. You know why they want you to do that? This goes for you, King. You know why they want you to, to go on out there into the world unprepared? Because they want you to turn around and self-sabotage your development at all costs. Why do you think prisons exist? Lack of options, lack of truth, lack of experience, lack of investment. So let's do this again. Why is it that the bad boy, because I know somebody going to hate. Oh, you, you just hate. Let me tell you something. You know, Queen, I always would say to you in my videos, Stop looking for Mr. Right. Prepare for Mr. Forever. Because wherever Mr. Forever is, you're connected to his legacy because you have inherited the right to be called wife. See, the bad boy don't think that. He's a social butterfly. And in turn, you've had other people 
that will not do the work to show, to try to convince you to be more thinking of individuality than being together. Why? Because when you're by yourself, you're more at risk. So, of course, they're going to turn around and push the narrative of, no, if they can do it, you can do it too. Instead of telling you, you know what? Don't worry about that. It'll be there. Prepare for your life. And that is why there's so many people that have discord in their life today because, number one, Someone or something convinced them that they got to get out into the race of life, even if they wasn't prepared. That's where the term fake it to make it comes into play. Why? Because they know as long as you're not prepared, the more you're not a risk. What do you mean risk? A risk of bringing change. And, here, and, and I was telling somebody the other day. Because we live in a world of social media. Do you realize that in the intended heart, intended mind, intended time, there are going to be generations after generations that are going to be able to look back at their great, great, great grandmother or grandfather acting in less light. Why? Because technology is going to do that. And guess what? No one has proprietorship over the internet. So you can't turn around and say, well, I'm going to go and erase this and it'd be, no. It's in the internet. While we're focused on the metaverse, you need to be focused on the internet because that's forever. So we've got we've got technology now that will make, that will put motion on photos. You see it on, you see it on social media. Well, you, you see people that had those of significant, and they put that program on it, and they and it manipulates it like they're actually right there. Yeah, yeah. Now imagine, just imagine, Queen, because I, I'm not trying to be winded, but I gotta, I gotta be, I gotta show the the importance. I think it was five years ago. That there was a story to hit the news where social media was being used as a tool for indictment. It was also being used as a tool uh, for employment too because you had third party uh, companies that their sole purpose was to dig up your social media. And even if you decided to hide it, which is a joke to a person that knows IT. Anything that you put on the internet, it is binary code. And guess what? If it's got a code, it can be found. Mm. Yeah. That's why That's why we went through that season of uh, sex tapes. It was like, everybody got sex tapes. Everybody got uh, uh, new photos. And, like, and there, was, there were people going around that were hitting these servers and they, and they were using ransomware to, it was like, hey, we're gonna extort you. Put your stuff out there. If you don't want it to be seen, you gotta pay blah, 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 blah. So, the point I'm trying to make is, we speedball past that, and a lot of people, ill-informed, embrace the mindset of, if I can't beat them, I'm gonna join them. Or better yet, convincing themselves in so many words, so what you see my breast photos out there? So they mine. So what you see my biscuits out there? They mine. So what you see the love below? It's mine. And try to use that as a way of deflecting embarrassment. This is all a narrative, queen. King, the ultimate goal of prevention is so that you don't become the parent, the grandparent, the elder of influence to those that are in your bloodline. They want you to fail. They want you to have that low energy. They want you to continue 
on that path because as long as you stay on that path, you're not a threat. You're not a risk. Think about it. Look at the narrative that's being played out on social media today. There's no respect there. They're not. Why? Because if they can't make a dollar, it don't make sense. And meanwhile, while we're spending money, spending time and effort stroking the keys to place judgment on something that you might not know or someone that you do, they in the back laughing at you because now you become the reality show and the entertainment because they've already invested in your discord. Place your self-respect first. Always look at your foundation. Always never lose sight of what you question or what is demanded to be made aware because that is your transparency, that is your temperance, and that is your uniqueness. Why? Because you have those that you will never come to know relying that you do. And guess what? If they never told you, you were made perfect. You were made perfect from the first hello. Don't get caught up on what you see. Because what you see got a price tag connected to it. Hoping that you will be the next customer. Have a great weekend. Stay blessed.